let's say we have a situation where we have some sort of variable. So let's call it test equals something. And we have to check various conditions. So we're going to have if condition. So let's say our condition is we're asking, we're checking if else some test is equal to something specific, equal to something specific else. If so, we're gonna have a bunch of these lines. Else if so, we're gonna have a bunch of else if statements. Like this, let's say we have a sort of scenario like this, like I, I keep saying. We can actually have a bunch of state if it else statement else if statements like this, but this works. But um, it will produce lots of lines of code, and it looks kind of weird. It looks kind of menacing to look at from far away, and it's kind of tedious to write once you have a bunch of conditions and you have a bunch of other paths to take, a bunch of other code to like path, code paths to take, and sometimes those code paths are often repetitive, just a little different. So another way of writing this is using the switch statement and switch cases. So let's see what that would look like. So let me erase all this. So we're going to have var called, we're going to have a variable called switch test. It's going to be equal to 10, for example. And here's how we write a switch statement. So we have switch and in sublime text. It's really cool to have this feature that where we um when you write in sw for example and you see an autofill you get that everything is done for you for like a simple sample layout of course we have to fill out things properly to match our what we're doing so let's do that so our variable to be tested is switch case not switch case switch test so what I'm doing here is the switch statement has is followed by parentheses. Inside parentheses is the variable that is to be tested against various cases, which we'll talk about in a minute. Of course, every, all the cases are encapsulated. They're kept inside these um, curly braces, like in um, if and else statements with their respective curly braces in their code. Now, while anything can be put inside here, inside these blocks, we need to have actual case is defined and ending with breaks. So key, as you can see your case label one. So a label here is what basically we're checking if switch is equal to label one, run this code. And we have a default statement, which means that this code will run right here. If none of the cases turn out to to check out. So let me start off. Let me start by doing this sort of switch switch test all right so we're going to test whether switch the variable switch test is going to be equal to 10 and then we're going to see inside here we're going to respond to this case we're going to have some code and we're just going to display the string 10 something really simple and then we're going to have another case this case is going to be equal to 100 so if you get it if you see get the gist of things by now when we define a case, right after that, we basically just write the value we're checking, comparing switch the variable inside the parentheses here with. So we're basically asking the first case, we're asking, is switch test equal to 10? If it is, display the string 10. And when we use break, we say break here because um, in switch cases, we need to stop from checking cases again and again. So we use break to end the whole whole switch check, conditional check altogether. So we need that for every single case. All right, moving on. So we checked for 10. And now we're asking, if that doesn't check out, we're saying, asking, does this variable switch test equal 100? If it does, we're going to say, run this following code. Just for example, we're just going to say, 100, 100, and then we're going to break, and then we have another case for 1,000. So we're after, if that 100 doesn't check out, we're going to say, is 
is it greater than is it are we not greater is it equal to a thousand if the switch is switch test equal to a thousand so we're going to say if it is we're going to just console write the string form of the literal string in words of the number one thousand and if not if none of these check out we're going to say not a valid number okay and now let's do that you get 10 so you let's do 100 you get 100 and you do a thousand get 1000 oops I did something wrong here hold on let me check let me check let me check console see here for some reason it displayed oh see there's what I forgot my break that's what happens when you don't do the break in one case you get other you get subsequent cases to run so if this didn't have break all these would be run until the next break so you need to be tricky with that I don't know why that is I just know that's the formula so you have a case case to check semicolon code to run then a break at the end of it followed by another case or as many cases as you need and default is written with a default keyword and just to recap, um, pink words in my sublime text anyway, they could be different colors than yours. They are in pink. Keywords means they're, that you can't use them as names for care, for names of variables and stuff like that. So yeah, don't forget your break keywords. And there you go, 1000. So let's make it a uh, five, for example. It's a number, but it's not a valid number. And yeah, there we go. So that's basically a switch statement, sw switch case. Those are that's a conditional switch conditional statement. Sorry, but I'm kind of tongue tied today. So let's do it something actually useful with a um, switch case. Switch cases. Um, we're gonna do an example to check the current month. So to do that, we're gonna have a very very. First we're gonna initialize some variables. So int month. Let's call int month. So what this is going to do, it's going to return the integer, which is the month of the current month. We're going to say new date get month. Okay, what I did here looks maybe a little weird to you guys because we haven't talked about a lot of this stuff yet. <laughs> First of all, we haven't talked about new. We haven't talked about date. We haven't talked about get month. We haven't talked about why I wrote this with a period and then wrote this afterwards. Well. I'll be explaining this in a later chapter, so you'll have to hold your horses on that one. But um, here what I'm basically doing is I'm creating a new date object and I'm getting, so I'm getting, basically this will create, a, it'll create, it will give return information of the current date based on my computer, based on the system's time. Here for me it says 11, 11.08 p.m. on this date. And but here get month this this is a function from this object that'll give me the current month as an integer. So here it says twelve, but um, it's zero inclusive. I, I actually it might not be zero inclusive. We'll get back to. I'm not sure if it's. We'll check it that in a second. So for month. So what we're gonna be doing with this um this uh this um, problem is that we're gonna check this variable value int month and then we're gonna store the result a certain result to this variable month all right let's say str month to make it more specific so this is month and integer and this is the month represented in this string form so we're gonna have switch switch case checking int month and then we're gonna check for each case one so it's often good practice to find your cases first and then you just fill the th fill everything in. So you have case one, you have case two, you have case three, and so on. So let me just do that. And you'll so basically what I'm doing here is I'm checking all the possible values of this int month up here. And this from one to twelve. So let's do that. Um, six. 
seven. This is maybe a little tedious. I mean, you don't have, this isn't, I should note that this isn't really necessary. A lot of times there, there's actually functions available in JavaScript to actually do this for us. So you don't have to really write anything out, but I'm just showing you how, how simply how, how um, switch cases work. So 11 and finally 12. Okay, so we have all of our statements. And by default, let's write the default statement. This is just going to be string month equals unknown. So we define the default first because it's always usually the simplest as, as we did with else false statement, else if statements, we define the else if statement first before the if statement. Oftentimes you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to do things like this. This is just a practice I recommend. All right, so here we'll just be assigning values to string month and for if it if it's equal to one we're going to say january and we're going to do the same thing for the next one so f february how do you spell f february and you have March, you have April, and so on. So we're just really just naming the months here. April, May, June. This is part of programming. Programming can be tedious at times, but it's necessary in our line of work. You gotta be patient with a lot of things. July. August, September, October, November, and December. So that's pretty much that. And we're going to sign after we assign these. After we assign these, we are going to just print out our result in the console. Actually, instead of printing to the console, let's change it up a bit and say alert str month. We're going to say the current month is. So what I did here is that I concatenated two strings together. I basically added this, the results, whatever it will be, it's going to be December in this case, onto this string to be displayed in the alert window. So let's do that. Oh, yep, it is, zero is inclusive here. I should have mentioned that. I was a little confused actually. It's So with this in, like I said, in programming, everything is zero, mostly everything is zero inclusive. So we have, you have to consider zero as the first, you, first item element. So zero is actually January. Uh, one is February, three, two is March, three is April, four is May, and so on. So let me just change these. Seven, eight, sorry about that guys. And 11 like it said November before because well that that method is zero inclusive which we'll talk about in its own chapter when we talk about dates but yeah that's pretty much how you use a uh, switch case those are pretty much all that's the functionality of a switch case and with that I'll conclude this tutorial